Hello, Mike. Let's talk about the secret of lenses. Well, everything is about an index of refraction. It is? Oh, that's interesting. Sure it is. What about a high index glass? Uh, yeah, it's got a higher indices of refraction. Index of refraction equals the velocity of light, and the light doesn't have a velocity, it's actually a rate of propagation. Index of refraction is the, uh, is, uh, is the uh, velocity of light, which is not a velocity, over the velocity of the medium is passing through. And then you end up with a index of refraction. Light, uh, light has no speed. It's actually a field perturbation. But light slows down, rather the rate of propagation decreases. Okay, rate of propagation decreases. You can say the speed of light decreases by 33% or so as it hits glass. Technically, what's happening is the rate of propagation decreases. But let's talk about, like, why would they stick radioactive shit in your lenses? Now, we have a thick element right over here. Back uh, quite a long time ago, actually before that, we discovered that adding lead to glass changed its uh, indices of refraction. When you add lead, you see what lead has? What is a really, really stupid, simple way so people can understand it? What happens when you stick lead in glass? It's basically like, uh, you know what happens to you, like you grease someone with hot butter and then they're able to slide down. <laughs> when you add lead to glass, it changes the dielectric permittivity of light. Yeah, therefore it changes the index of refraction. In other words, you're able to get by with the same index of refraction and use less glass, which is easier to produce and faster to produce, has the exact same index of refraction. So you got the thick piece of glass over here and a thin piece of glass over there. They discovered, lo and behold, oh my God, if we stick this highly radioactive... You know, I, I love talking to these idiots in photography. And you don't, you don't need to know this stuff to be a good photographer. It's interesting to know. You're like, well, that's interesting. I actually learned something today. Isn't that what life should kind of be like? It's like to learn something every day. It's like, you think somebody like accidentally stumbled along. It's like, you know, we've been making lenses all these years. What if we threw some radioactive shit in this glass, you know? It's like, what are you talking about there, Bob? Yeah, let's throw some radioactive crap in the glass. You know? <laughs> Now, people say if you add a thorium to the glass, it changes the index of refraction. Well, that's true, but that's a description, girlfriend. You know what a description is? A description is not an explanation. No, index refraction. We have high index glass over here, and we have a normal refractive index glass over here. So we're able to make this thinner. I used to cut down lenses for glasses. I worked for Southern Optical, uh, Super Optical Express, and uh, uh, Monfried Optical. And uh, one other place I won't name because they're horrible. Most of you probably heard of it. So I cut down. I used to deal with high index glass. Most of it's plastic I deal with. Some of it was monopolymer injected resin, which would actually cure. And we'd make lenses. You make high index lenses. Mm. So the refractive index equals velocity of light over the velocity of the medium. See, most people don't know that light slows down. It doesn't really slow down. The rate of propagation slows down by 33% through just normal glass. Okay, There are a lot of different crap you could add to glass. Right now, we don't use the radioactive crap. We use uh, uh, neodymium oxide. We use uh, lanthanum dioxide and like 14 other. Uh, the serious uh, secret to lenses is not the index of refraction, because anybody can measure that. Um, using a, uh, a uh, standard, uh, just, just, just a backwards engineering of a lens, taking the lens apart. Uh, that's only going to show you the index of refraction. That's not going to actually tell you what is actually added to the glass and when is added to the glass. That's like the secret recipe of grandma's cake. We have reflection, obviously. We have refraction. We have absorption. We have deflection. Or we have, you know, absorption and uh, a redirected, uh, re-radiated light, so... We also know what, obviously, a diffracted light is. We know what reflected light is, right? We don't want reflection on the front element, which is why we add AR coating, obviously, right? Anti-reflective coating, which is a vacuum-deposited crystalline coating. So why the hell do you think they stick that radioactive crap in the lens as well? Is to make the lenses thinner, have uh, less chromatic aberration. It means that the lens is going to be lighter, it's going to be cheaper to produce, and it's going to have the exact same refractive index and be a lot thinner. So, it has a higher index of refraction. 
but that's a description. That's, that's not an explanation. Since everything in the universe is capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity, what the hell do you think is going on by adding radioactive shit or like uh, niobium oxide or lanthanum dioxide to lenses, to actual glasses? And Zeiss, by the way, still uses lead in their lenses. Yes, they do. It even states it on an abstract part of Zeiss's own website. They say, still use lead. There's even a Euro the Europeans like banned everything. The Europeans are total douchebags when it comes to like everything is banned in Europe. Like anything that's even slightly, slightly, slightly harmful for you, it's banned. But there's still an exemption for lead in the production of optical instruments. I have the abstract quote somewhere in all this Euro nonsense propaganda, government bureaucracy crap that uh, lens manufacturers have an exemption for still using lead. Um, you can actually see it by looking at Zeiss lenses. They even feel heavy. It's like, well, they're metal lenses on the outside body. That's not it entirely. It's leaded glass. You know what leaded glass looks like if you know what the hell it looks like. So, as we have descriptions. Well, it changes the index of refraction. Yeah, but why does it change the index of refraction? Well, because light is electrical. You know that shit that like powers your solar chargers on the roof of your, you know, your house? Solar power? Yeah, light is electrical. Yeah, longitudinal dielectric, transverse, either circular or linear polarization of electromagnetic constituents. Pretty sure somewhere in there in light is the word electricity. By adding these compounds to the actual glass, it changes the dielectric permittivity of light as it passes through it. Which in really, really stupid simplex analogies is like saying you buttered up the, the glass so that the light slips through it easier with a, the exact same index of refraction without using as much glass. Everything is about permeability, permittivity, capacitance, and resistance. So, while it's true that adding these things changes the index of refraction of the glass elements, that's not an explanation of why it changes it. Because light is electrical. And these, you know, what does thorium and lead have in common? They have extremely high dielectric nucleal natures to them. They're heavy. Why would you, I mean, what, it's like, oh, just, let's throw some radioactive crap in these camera lenses. Yeah. Yeah. That's all like a good idea. Radioactivity. You know, it's really dangerous. When they were making those lenses, people died just from the production of the additive, the, the radioactive thorium added to that mold. It's not a coating. It's in the glass. Caused a lot of issues of, you know, hot work areas. Not meaning hot from the molten glass, meaning hot due to radioactivity. Thorium doesn't just emit alpha and beta, it emits gamma. I've done a lot of videos on radioactive lenses. This isn't about radioactive thorium. This is about uh, explaining why the hell they stick that shit in the lenses. They use, they do the same thing now as they did, except we just found alternatives. And by the way, the alternatives are not as good. This is why those Super Takabar 50 millimeters are so extremely highly praised. I've got a lot of those lenses. The price on those lenses too is kind of skyrocketing. It's still about 60 bucks, really, for a 50 millimeter 1.4 Takamar. Which, by the way, is pretty damn radioactive. I've got a video where I actually place three camera bodies on top of a lens, and it's still uh, smoking hot radioactive through those three solid camera bodies. That's gamma radiation, girlfriend. Not alpha, not beta. It's gamma radiation. Yeah. All those people that say that uh, the radiation you get off of uh, one of those lenses is uh, about the same as ambient radiation. I mean, those people are so full of crap, it's not even funny. Anyway, I thought you'd find that a little bit of information neat because uh, that is the reasoning behind the high indices of refraction by adding these specific lead, radioactive, we don't use radioactive crap anymore in lenses, uh, to the lenses. That's the reason. It actually redirects the light electrically. That is what changes the index of refraction, the IR of the lens. So there you go. There's the information. You know, and those are too still today the secret formulas of glass 
The Zeiss has their secrets of how what they add to the glass and when they add it and in what amounts. So disassembling a Zeiss lens and like checking the index of refraction and the parameters of each lens will never tell you what is in that lens and in what quantities and when it was added in the process. Doesn't tell you that. Those are still the secret recipes today of all lens manufacturers. There is no denying that. That's a hardcore fact. Thank you for watching so much. Catch you later. Okay? Bye.